my name is Randy Castillo, and welcome to Starlix. Uh, within the format of this video, uh, I'm going to show you some of my stuff. Uh, some of the stuff I've done in the past with Ozzy and uh, with Lita Ford. Uh, and uh, I'll just start off with show, telling you about my equipment right now. Uh, my symbols are Zildjian's. Uh, up here I have uh, Zildjian Platinum China Boys. They're both low China Boys. There's a high and a low. These are the lows. And they're real good for crash and accent types things, you know. And real good for making your ears ring. Uh, my hi-hat is uh, a Zildjian 14-inch Dino Beat, the Z model, and they're very heavy duty, and they're, they're built for rock, you know. And uh, they cut through real well when you're playing with a, a blasting metal band like Ozzy or something. It's, uh, they definitely do the trick. Uh, up here to my left is a, a Zildjian Platinum 19-inch Crash Ride. And uh, it has a good, good attack, and it, the, the ring lasts a little longer than uh, uh, like the Z-Type, for instance. And okay, over here, my ride symbol is a 24 inch heavy power ride, which is, uh, this is the, uh, this is my baby right here. <laughs> it's, it'll, it cuts and it's loud and it's, it's just a monster. Real good bell on this thing. Uh, over here I have the X hat. It's a 13 inch Dino Beat Z. And I use it for like little accent things, you know. <laughs> Stuff like that. And over here, these are just little accent uh, splash symbols. Uh, have a little 10 inch here, an 8 inch here. Just good for little accent things. Okay, the drums are uh, the Imperial Star Tomas. I'll start off with my Toms here. I got. Uh, 8 inch, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And uh, I'll just play them a little bit. I get a uh, good range here from high to low. Uh, my bass drums are 22 by 16 inch Thomas. Uh, uh, the 22s I like, I used to use 26, 24s, and uh, they're a little too boomy for me for my taste. These have real good mid-range punch. And the stick I use, sticks I use, <laughs> is a Pullmark 808 Hickory. And they even personalize it with my own signature on it, which is nice. Uh, I shave, I shave about halfway down, I shave the lacquer off, sandpaper or a knife. And it makes for a much better grip, you know. You're gonna get hot and sweaty and uh, they get pretty slippery when they're lacquered up. So I just shave it about halfway down and it does a trick. I get a real good grip out of them. And uh, my snare is a 14 inch by eight deep uh, Art Star snare. And uh, it's a good rock and roll snare drum. It really it does the trick. Okay, let's start off with rudiments. Uh, to me, uh, rudiments are real important, uh, they, especially if you're starting. They uh, kind of, they're great for developing technique and speed, and uh, I just think uh, it's something that you could use and you shouldn't pass up if you're gonna get serious about playing. Uh, one, there's the basic one, the one that everybody always does, is the paradiddle, and you can apply it in uh, all kinds of different ways to your plan. Uh, it's, you know, the right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Another way of applying the paradiddle to your plane is uh, just using the, uh, interchange it with the bass drum and the snare. Uh, it'll, using the bass drum doing what the right hand would normally do. And 
And uh, within the context of a song, you could use that, for instance. So it's a, it's a pretty effective little, uh, little thing to know. Uh, there's a double paradiddle, which is just an extra two beats. It's a right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left. And I'll use uh, the, the bass drum as what doing what my right hand was doing. You get like a 6-8 feel, something like this. And uh, there are just endless possibilities. If you can master the rudiments, you just you'll you'll be able to master the drums. Okay, the most uh, I would say the most important thing in playing uh, rock and roll for the drummer is uh, the feel, the groove, and uh, that's something that you should uh, stress on developing uh, because that's what's going to make the band cook and playing with the band. You gotta have a groove, and that's what rock and roll is all about. So I'll play uh, a straight, basic rock groove, and uh, you should try practicing it, and, and just practice it, and practice it, and practice it. And uh, so you can develop that feel. It'll come around. You'll know it when you feel it. And uh, so I'll just start off with the basic uh, groove beat. Okay, I'm gonna uh, break down uh, the basic rock beat for you. Uh, uh, this goes like this. The hi-hat is uh, just doing uh, the eighth notes. This. One thing that could help you in developing that is uh, playing with a metronome and practicing with a metronome. Because time and meter are really important. Uh, nobody's going to want to be playing with a drummer uh, that's racing to the end or slowing down. Uh, it's, uh, it's real important that you develop that uh, sense of time, perfect time. And uh, in, in that kind of groove, situation too it's it's the way the drums are hit that's real important you have to dig in you can't just uh pussyfoot around you got to dig in and really like uh you know beat these suckers okay I'd like to get into uh, uh, dynamics, uh, playing, you know, when you should play loud, play loud, and when you should get quiet, and uh, using that. For instance, uh, in a song like uh, I Don't Know, it's, it's a real fast thing, and it goes down to real, like a ballad halftime thing. I'll play some of that.
I'm going to break down that part, the transition, and I don't know that leads into the halftime part. The rolls, the rolls are flam triplets. I'll, I'll just play them real slow so that you can get the idea. And the, the beat itself is just, uh, I'll play it real slow as well, it's a half time. And so on. A big part of the, this, uh, the dynamics that I want to st stress is the cymbals. Uh, choking up, we're playing them open and hard and soft. It has everything to do with dynamics. For instance, in the hi-hat, um, when you want to bring something down, you would close it and uh, just get more of a chunk. And you can go, it goes something like this. And uh, the crash cymbals, uh, you could use them, you can hit them soft or hit them hard. And uh, one of the things I do is to hit this cymbal underneath, I get a soft early crash and then come down on the beat with a real good hard loud one like this. And that motion underneath is real good because it's like you get it's one one movement instead of as opposed to going like this, which is a little more less of a flow. This way it flows better, and you're back on this symbol with it, with a lot less effort. So it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a good way of doing using that. Uh, another thing is, is these China boys are great for accents and uh, the way you hit them. You, know, you can hit them real hard or real soft, uh, depending on the kind of accent you want to use. Okay, we're going to get into some uh, bass drum technique, and uh, bass drum is uh, very important in the, in rock and roll. It's it's the the low punch. It's the one that's going to hit you right here. So first of all, I'm going to show you the way I hit the bass drum. I use the toe method, as opposed some people like to flat foot it, but you get a lot more power using your toe. You, your whole leg is involved. And that's that's uh, my technique for it. As far as uh, the double beats, it's, uh, the way I do it is uh, it's based kind of a sliding motion. The first beat is, is uh, the, the pedal snaps back. And the second is just a solid hit. I just kind of, the first one is a bounce. It just kind of slides in. The, the foot just slides into the pedal. So it's important to practice that until you master it. Just keep trying and trying until you can master that. Because uh, once you do, you'll be able to do stuff like this.
can be real effective. Uh, I, there's an, other things you can do with the other bass drum. Here's one thing that I do that's uh, real effective for me, especially in a solo type of situation. I do a, a double on the right kick and a single on the left, and it's like this. And when you combine it with uh, two beats on the drums, you get something like this. So it can be real effective in a solo situation especially. And uh, you can use that same pattern, uh, which is a, one I use on a song with Lita Ford called Die For Me Only, and it, it goes like this. Okay, that's how that section was fast. So I'll play the die for me only beat slow. I'll break it down for you in little parts so you can understand it a little better. Okay, it's uh, the bass drum pattern is the two on the right kick and one on the left again. Yeah. And I'll do it real slow. And uh, I'll just speed it up so you get an idea, you know, how it here's slow to fast. Okay, here's another variation I use in uh, a song called Killer of Giants on the Ultimate Sin album. It's a double bass drum pattern, uh, and it's in, it's in the fast part of the song. The song is basically slow, but the middle section is a fast section, and, and it's a good uh, double bass drum pattern. I'll play it. Okay, basically it's just uh, a single stroke roll on the bass room. It's, it's, it's uh, right, left, right, left, snare. It's, uh, it's really good to know, and once you get that down, get it up to speed, it's real effective when you're playing something real fast. It's a, it's a powerful lick. Okay, here's uh, some other double bass drum patterns uh, that I'm going to show you here. Uh, just a steady, a lot of heavy metal music is, uh, has this, uh, and I use it quite a bit. It's just an alternate bass drum pattern between both bass drums, and uh, 
Well, I'll go somewhere like this. Just a single stroke roll. I'll just do it slow for you. Okay, we're going to get into some fills now. Uh, one of the more popular ones, I think, is uh, the intro to Over the Mountain. Uh, I always uh, get asked about how I play that. And it's, uh, well, I'll play it fast first, and uh, you can you know, know what I'm talking about. And it's uh, basically just a triplet on the, between the snare, the tom, and the bass drum. It, the, the pattern itself is just this. pattern to learn because uh, you can use it in just all kinds of different ways uh, between all the times. It's great in a solo situation for, uh, I use on my solo in the Ultimate Aussie video, I use that as uh, at the peak of the solo and I started off slow and build it up and I'll just do that for you now. Another fill I do is, uh, and one I get asked about quite a bit, is one I did on uh, the Lita Ford album, Dancing on the Edge, in a song called Run With The Money. And it goes like this. So I'll play it slower, and uh, so you can get an idea of what's going on. It's just basically uh, a double sticking pattern with a double bass drum pattern. And uh, on a couple of the beats, I just use a single. That's what gives it the turnaround feel. And at speed, it sounds real good. With Phil, it's important that you use them in, uh, within a song, not overusing them, because what you don't play is just as important as what you do play. So uh, it's good, to, uh, usually at the end of a phrase, the beginning of a solo, to build up uh, a part of the song to emphasize something. And, uh, you know, don't overplay, don't play fills in the middle of a verse. Uh, you know, you don't have to solo all night. Basically, uh, you want to keep good time and just uh, play with the band and make, a, make the band as dynamic as you possibly can. So it's, it's good to, to use uh, a little bit of restraint when you're doing, u using fills and uh, not overdo them. Okay, we're gonna get into solos. Uh, what, I, uh, what I like in a solo is one that has a uh, you know, beginning, a middle, and a peak at the end. Something like a song, it should be a song. And, uh, the one I use, uh, 
like the one I did in the Ultimate Aussie video, it comes out of the song Secret Loser. And uh, it just, it goes something like this. And then it leads into uh, the roles and etc. But I'll do a little bit of that, what I would just do in there for you. And it's uh, basically a, a bass drum snare with an open hi-hat uh, pattern. I like, to, I like to vary it, and uh, I don't think I ever play it the same way uh, from night to night. It it's always depends on how I feel or what's going you know, through my head at the time. And uh, from there, I usually go into, uh, I'll do some rolls around the toms, uh, rolls that go something like this. So I do that and vary it uh, like I do everything else in the solo from night to night. And uh, that's basically what that part is. And uh, from that point, I'll play those rolls slow to get a better idea of what I'm doing. It's basically an alternate type of sticking pattern, which is... Uh, From there in the solo, I, I go to a floor tom uh, type of pattern, and uh, I stand up and uh, get the drum, change the tone of the drum just by standing on it and pushing down on the head. It's, it's a good little trick. You know? That's a nice little entertaining thing to do. And uh, then I would go around the kit, as you can see in the video, play the shells, and, uh, and the, the peak of the solo, I would come back and uh, do the, uh, the triplet pattern I showed you earlier, which was... The head thing's a little, uh, you get a good sound when you do that, you know, it sounds much better, very effective. Okay, a lot of what I do with Ozzy and what I've done with bands in the past is uh, some, you know, just little tricks I use with sticks, you know, it helps to add it's, uh, to the, the visual of the, if you will, of, uh, the whole show. Because usually you just have a drummer sitting back there and uh, it doesn't get noticed that much because you're just stationed there and the guitar players are wailing away. So I thought, you know, I'd like a little bit of that attention too, you know. So I started uh, just uh, adding these things in the show, give it a little flash and panache. So, and it's uh, basically it's a stick spinning for one, uh, which is this uh, between the two middle and, your, and uh, index finger here. And it's, uh, it's not really a spin, it's just an illusion, an illusionary spin. And you, you can develop it by turning your hand in the motion that the stick's gonna go. And as you practice it and work on it, you get it down to the point where it's real smooth. Try it backwards, you know, a little variation there. And uh, work, work on it with both hands. I just practice it, you know. And uh, another one I'd use while I'm playing, it's uh, you, in the Lita Ford video, Gotta Let Go. I use this quite a bit, and uh, 
It's, it's an effective little trick. It goes like this. And all I'm doing there is just lifting the stick up off the hi-hat and throwing it into the air and catching it and keeping the beat going. Don't lose the beat on account of that. And this one is just flipping the stick backwards like that. That's an effective little trick to know. Now, something that's a little more complex goes like this. So, that one, I'll do it real slow. It might make a little more sense. And what's happening here is my left hand, I'm holding it this way in the uh, traditional grip. It's stick goes around like this. It's, that's a pattern. It's, it's not really so much a spin as it is a hand movement. But it gives the illusion of a spin. And this one is the regular spin. And I'll do it real slow. Another thing I do in the stick flash department is uh, I throw my stick up in the air and 80% uh, of the time I think I catch it. And uh, if I don't, so what? You know, you just have to you know, not be embarrassed about it. Just carry on and, you know, as if nothing happened. So I'll, I'll try to do that one for you now. Okay, I'm going to try and uh, just do a little bit of everything I've been covering uh, and try to, you know, put it all together and uh, kind of show you what makes up my style and uh, hope you get a better understanding of what I'm doing, okay? So I'll just start off by playing a beat and I'll play a few of the things and try to t tie it all in together. Okay, I hope uh, that some of the things uh, you've seen me play <clears throat> here on the video is uh, in some way going to help you. Uh, whether you're a beginning, intermediate, or advanced player, uh, you can never stop learning. So, uh, you know, it's steal from everybody, and it's going to, inevitably, it's going to come out sounding like you. Uh, just keep on practicing like a maniac, practice, practice. And, uh, and listen and try to play with other people as much as you possibly can because you can learn a lot faster that way. And uh, the whole idea is to play with the band. You know, you can lock yourself up in your room and practice forever, but if you don't play with somebody, then uh, you're going to sound that, that way. So uh, stick with it, you know, and uh, 
You'll do it if you want it bad enough.